So here we're going to take a look at how to create a Java program that can talk to an Arduino and get values from the Arduino in the Arduino sensors and publish them in the Java program to be used for making a graph. So we're going to start by making this IntelliJ project and in it, I'll create a little package and then a Java class, a main Java class. And then I will use that main Java class to call a second class on a schedule. So here's the first class, the main one. I'm going to have a main method inside of it. And I'm going to create a second class that will be my Arduino task. And that task will be called on a schedule. So here's that task right here. Now I go back to the main class. I'm going to start working on it by importing from Maven first JSSC version 2.94 going to import Fermata for Java Fermata for J 2.3.8 then SLF4J JCL version 1.7.3 and then from there I'm going to import the um, the graphics package from the Princeton Computer Science Standard Library. So I look up Princeton in the keyword here, and I can get my standard library from there. All right, so now a bunch of import statements that I'm going to put in here for the standard draw library, the Fermata, different components, IO exceptions, and then I'm going to define a few constants, including the COM port or the serial port. And the serial port comes from the Arduino IDE. You can find it there. You have to have the board plugged in. And so I fire up the Arduino IDE and I go looking for the port that my Arduino is connected to. And in this case, it's going to be COM3. On an Apple computer, it'll be something else. The, the most straightforward way to, to look for it is using the Arduino IDE, whether you're on a Mac or on a Windows machine. So in this case, it identified it as COM3, and I named my board Uno. During the Fermata download, you actually have to install Fermata uh, on here using the Arduino IDE, but I've already done that. If you haven't, you have to, at that stage, download Fermata or standard Fermata onto your board using the Arduino IDE, and that's in one of my other videos. All right, so I'm going to define two components that are on the board, an LED on the D4 input, and a potentiometer on the A0 input. So the LED is defined as, as a value 4 and the potentiometer value 14. From there, I create my Fermata devices and start and ensure initialization with the throwing of the exceptions in the signature of the main method. From there, I create my first pin for my LED, and I'm going to do a test of this to make sure everything's working properly. Define it as an output, a digital output, and I set its value, the LED, to 1 to turn it on. I then sleep for 2 seconds, and then set the value to 0 to turn off the LED. And from there, I put a little statement saying it's going to stop, and we're going to run this to make sure that the LED will turn on. So we're going to look. That LED in the corner should turn on. It's on D4 on the Arduino board. You might have a different board where it's located at a different location, but in this case, it's D4. So that worked with a two second pause using thread sleep. Okay, so next up, I want to build on this and I'm going to have the board um, check for the potentiometer value that will be obtained from a method in my scheduled task. I'm going to have a method that outputs the value using get pot value, which I'll define in the other file. And I'm going to pass in a starting value, in this case 10. I'll change it later on to, uh, to 0 or 1. And I pass in the object my Arduino board, which is that Fermata uh, object. All right. From here, I want to extend timer task, which is a standard Java uh, class. And I want to extend it and define my Arduino task from it. I'm going to redefine my constants inside of this class right here. 
and uh, I'm going to create a couple of uh, other uh, objects, IO device, my Arduino board, etc. And I'll use a constructor to make uh, to pass the passed in values into local copies. So this my Arduino board, this my LED, etc. And then in the constructor, I'm going to set up my LED just to make sure that it's an output like this. And I surround it with a try catch block to, uh, to verify if there's a problem, it will catch that exception. Furthermore, I'm going to set up my potentiometer using the same try catch. And I'm going to set the potentiometer to be both an analog, well, to be an analog uh, input. So you go, so it's not an input in put, but dot analog because it takes in values from zero to 1023. It's eight bit, eight bit, sorry, uh, analog input. Next up, I define a method called get pot value, which will pass the sampled value uh, from the potentiometer back into my other method, my main method later on. You'll see how we use that later. All right, turns out I'm going to have to change that value that is returned or the, the name of the variable that's returned. We'll figure that out later. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to override the run method from timer task in order to run effectively the task that we want uh, to execute on a regular, um, at a regular period or on, on a regular frequency. All right, so what we're going to do in here is we're going to uh, set up a variable that will keep track of a state for the LED so we can have an LED turn on and off every time we call this task. And I'm going to um, reset that value um, for, the, for the, the, the flag effectively that keeps track of what state the LED should be in. And in the if else, I also set the value of the LED. I've got that uh, variable set right there and it'll be an integer and I'll pass in a value from the main method afterwards. There's different ways that you can implement this, but uh, that's how I've done it in this case. All right, next, inside of that run method, uh, we're going to check the value of the potentiometer and we're going to pass it to sampled pot value within this class. And that will allow the get pot value method to return that internally generated or internally sampled value. I need the try catch in there as well. Fix a couple of typos. And we're just about ready, I think, to try and run it. All right, here we go. So we're going to run it. We're going to see if we can get a value printed out. And there we go. We got a value printed out. I'm going to turn the potentiometer with my finger now. And that value on the screen in the terminal should change. And it does. Uh, 1023. Turn it down the other way. 616 and 0. So I can see that it does change as I turn it. 344. 342, 386, 610. So you can see as I turn that potentiometer, that black knob, the value gets exported to the main method where it is printed to the screen. So now we're ready to set up a graph that takes those values and plots them. But graphing in Javic can be a little on the complicated side. So we're going to use the Princeton Standard Library to do this. And I'll show you how that's used in a moment. But you can see basically that potentiometer is working just like we want. All right. So let's move on now to setting up a graph. Because that's really important that we be able to graph for the user what's going on in here. So we go back into the main class and we're going to set up the graph just before that while loop. So the first thing to do is to set the scale, the vertical and horizontal. So in terms of the, the horizontal scale, we're going from basically up to about from zero to 100. And we're going to go with a little bit of space on the left. And on the vertical, we're going to go negative 30 to 1100. So there's also space for a label on the bottom. And then from there, I'm going to set my pen radius and I'm going to draw my Y and X axes. And then from there, I'm going to write my labels in the uh, blank space uh, uh, below and to the left of the graph. And then I'm going to sample, uh, or sorry, I'm going to print out a value 
of the sample that came from the other uh, method. Um, I'm going to print it out on my uh, on my graph. I'm going to increment that sample uh, and the value. I'm going to increment the sample and then plot out the value every time I want to go through this while loop. And there's a, a pause here of half a second each time. All right, so we're going to run this. And what should happen now is that as I turn that knob right there, the value should plot on the standard library standard draw plot. So the values are coming in from the timed task and they're getting printed by the main class. There you go, you can see them being printed to the screen and they're related to the values that you see in the terminal. So we're seeing both the graph and the terminal values at the same time. And because I had an if else statement that reset the sample number after we got to 100, it will wrap around as you saw just happen right there. This is a way of having a dynamic graph in Java from the Arduino.